What's up, gang? Kawaii50 here with yet another fake Grand Order Servant Breakdown, and it's about time we start breaking into some of those new Friend Point Servants. So I wanted to go ahead and kick this off with the brand new two-star Berserker, Salome. Now, why are we talking about Salome first? Well, that's because my friend Shin Edi just got his Salome grailed to 100. So why don't you all go ahead and give Shin a much-deserved round of applause. Now that that's all done, it's time to look more at Salome in terms of allies, craft essences, command codes, and all of the skills that make her tick. So if this video helps make your Salome a little stronger on your team, why don't you uh, go ahead and consider leaving a like, maybe subscribing, maybe clicking some of the links in the description below. I don't know. I think it's a good idea. Let's get on with the video. So our two-star Berserker has a quick two arts and two buster deck with a three-hit single target arts noble phantasm. Her max HP of 6,885 is really, really on the low side, but that's slightly irrelevant considering she's a Berserker. They're all really made of paper anyways, they usually go down in a single hit, so HP doesn't really become that much of an issue on them. You want to protect them regardless. Her max attack of 6,884, however, is a far higher attack than compared to her max HP. It is comparatively a lot higher in the grand scheme of things. And this ends up getting treated as an even higher value considering her Berserker class advantage. Her NP per hit at a 0.5 ends up being actually considerably low considering her only three hits on her arts cards. I would have preferred a third arts card, but that's just me. Her star absorption is of course pitiful as is expected of a Berserker sitting at a lowly 9. So crits are not going to be your best friend. Salome's first skill is the Blood Soaked Silver Platter, rank B+. This gives her an extra 30 to 50% damage against lawful good enemies specifically for 3 turns, and also increases her attack by 10 to 20% for 3 turns as well. You're going to want to go ahead and level this first because it is her primary source of damage up. The lawful good bonus in and of itself ends up being fairly niche, if I'm honest. If it was lawful or good, I would really consider it much better. But considering the enemy has to be lawful good, you're really going to have to know the enemies you're fighting in order to make good on that bonus. But still, a 10-20% to attack boost for 3 turns is pretty good, and it's even better on a Berserker. Salome's second skill is Natural Body Figure Rank C. This gives her one instance of debuff immunity that lasts for three turns, and also increases her defense by 10 to 20% for three turns, and it gives her a turn of invincibility. She gets one instance of invincibility, it lasts for three total turns, so she has to get hit for that to pop. This is honestly a very good defensive skill on a low rarity servant. You can really tell that they're trying to uptick the power on these freebie characters. I would definitely recommend maxing this skill second, mainly so you can decrease the cooldown of that sweet, sweet invincibility. Berserkers need it more than really anybody else. And Salome's third skill is the Dance of the Seven Veils rank A, and this is a weird one. So for seven turns, she will recover 500 to 1000 HP. However, she will also remove one defensive buff from herself every single turn. This includes things like invincibilities, like defense ups, so like evades, for example. So this might end up being an issue. But after those seven turns, she will give all of her allies a 50 to 100% boost on their Noble Phantasm. So it ends up becoming a free NP charge which can be kind of out of hand. You really need to build a team around this skill to make it work. You need to make sure your Salome is going to be protected for those seven turns to get that 50 to 100% Noble Phantasm charge. A lot of players likely will not bother doing this. I mean, there are far quicker ways to get your Noble Phantasm charged to 100%, and they don't require such a heavy commitment of removing all of the defensive buffs on an already very squishy servant to begin with. So go ahead and max this skill last. Unless you're building a team around it, you're going to be using this for the HP recovery, and there is still a very good chance that Salome will die while this skill is still ticking down. But making up for that third skill is Salome's honestly amazing Noble Phantasm. 
Femme Fatale by Sarah rank B deals 900 to 1500% damage to a single enemy, and you're gonna have her at NP5 because she's from the friend point gotcha. This also inflicts 1000 damage of curse on a single enemy for 5 turns, but most importantly is the overcharge ability, which applies curse damage up to a single enemy for 5 turns. So even though that curse damage is a base 1000, that's going to be multiplied by another 200 to 4 hundred percent that is some serious ticks of damage especially considering enemies can do things like invincible like evade and they'll still end up taking damage from that there are some fun ways you can go ahead and stack curses with salome and another servant to make sure not even your enemies invincibilities will keep them from your wrath and we'll go over that in the ally section even at base with the damage though this is a great noble phantasm so who do we pair Salome with in order to try and ensure that she stays on the field? Because let's be real, she's a very squishy berserker that will remove her own defensive buffs. So we've really got to think about that. Let's of course start with our freebie options. And this is more of a PSA to a lot of the beginners out there that I know are watching these videos recently, especially videos on freebie servants. Level your mash. Mash is an incredible pairing for Salome and pretty much any servant in the game, but it works well for Salome specifically. Her wall of snowflakes gives all of her allies damage cut and defense up at its max bonus. She has a targeted invincibility and NP gauge charge on an ally, which can help Salome's not as good NP gain. And also her noble phantasm, when it eventually gets fully upgraded, provides an incoming damage damage cut for all allies, increases all of their attack, and increases all of their defense. Pretty much anyone can benefit from this, but if you're trying to run a team without spending a lot on the gacha, pairing Mash with Salome is actually a very good idea. Speaking of freebies, I've also got to give a shout out to Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who actually also pairs really well with Salome for different reasons. For starters, his protection of Muse skill will increase her arts card effectiveness for one turn, granting her a damage boost. If you upgrade his third skill to max, Ina Klein and Noct Music rank EX, make sure you've got a full Salome Brave Chain ready to go, because that will grant 50 critical stars immediately, which is a guaranteed crit on every single one of those cards. Also, on top of that, his Noble Phantasm is an amazing debuffing Noble Phantasm. Not only will it decrease the enemy's attack and defense, but it will also inflict curse on all enemies based on overcharge. So if you use this on an enemy that is already afflicted by Salome's curse damage up, yes, it will affect the curse damage from Mozart's Noble Phantasm, effectively allowing you more turns of damage over time. Let's continue our talk about low rarity servants by talking about our big boy golem master and that magnificent tranquil fig skill. You'll go ahead and try to make sure he gets attacked instead of Salome, which you want anyways. But when tranquil fig drops, she will get two instances of invincibility for three turns, unless the skill's at 10, then she gets three. And also she'll get a 1000 to 2000 HP recovery. But even on top of that, Golem Keter Malkuth will increase her Noble Phantasm gain by 20 to 40%, helping to make up for that weird weakness that somehow exists on an Arch Servant. Okay, now that we've covered a lot of stuff that's good for freebie players, as well as a lot of players on NA, it's time to talk about a couple of servants for future proofing, as well as making sure all the JP players out there stay happy, because you matter too. Let's go ahead and talk about two servants who have yet to hit NA, but will be very good pairings with Salome when they come out. Starting, of course, with Balbon Seath. Balbon Seath is an incredible servant that also has curse in her Noble Phantasm. I don't really understand why they made this servant the way that they did, it just doesn't seem fair. She's like a Salome on steroids with this Noble Phantasm, applying the same curse damage effect and also applying increased curse damage on overcharge as well. All of these effects stack on, on top of each other, gang. They all stack together. It is all interconnected and intertangled. So pairing Balbon Seath with Salome will give you a very enjoyable curse team that you can play with. I can picture some people absolutely decimating some weird challenge quests in the game solely with this setup. It's going to be a very fun thing for you to try. 
but we can also go even further beyond by pairing Salome with a five star that I feel like is pretty much mandatory, and that is Ashia Doman. Ashia Doman pairs so well with Salome, it is not even funny. For starters, she is Chaotic Evil, and his Black Fate skill and his Doman's Curse skill provide bonuses to evil allies and or chaotic allies. They stack if the ally is chaotic evil, which Salome is, so she will get a massive slew of critical strength, of attack buffs. It is just amazing the bonuses Ashia Doman is able to provide for her. You won't even notice that she is a two star. But wait, there's more. His Noble Phantasm, his third skill and his first skill all apply curse to enemies. On top of that, his Noble Phantasm has an overcharge effect which applies curse damage up for five turns. You pair Ashia Doman with Baobin Seath and Salome, and you've got yourself an incredibly fun curse team that will not care if the enemy uses invincibility, evade, or defense up. That curse is just going to go ahead and eat away at them. It's a team I honestly really would like to try myself. And of course, I'm sure this goes without saying, but I'll mention it at the end here just in case. Make sure, if you can, you try to pair her with art supporters as well. Of course, for most people, this is going to be Castoria or Tamamo no Mai, but your Paracelsus von Hohenheim, your Castor Gilgamesh, your Prince of Lonling, any of these are going to be truly incredible options for Salome as well. For Salome's craft essences, you want to give her Arts Card effectiveness, NP damage, NP gain, as well as starting NP gauge. Any of these bonuses, either together, separate, what have you, these are going to be the craft essences that give her the biggest boosts. For your freebie option, I definitely got to recommend Painting Summer, which you can easily get a copy of during the summer event. This gives you Arts Card effectiveness, NP gain, and a starting NP gauge. Now, even though Berserkers are weak to foreigners, Salome can still gain bonuses out of Emerald Float. This will grant her Arts Card effectiveness and NP strength. You're giving up that starting NP gauge, but we've already established that through supports, you can find a way to charge your NP relatively fast. Or maybe you want to play into her third skill. That's fine too. However, you can also go with Mark on a Smiling Face, which I personally think is better than Emerald Float. This provides the Arts Card effectiveness and the NP strength, but also slips some Noble Phantasm gain in there as well, to help shore up one of Salome's weirdest problems. However, if you are confident that you can charge her Noble Phantasm quickly, and you just want to go all in on that sweet free NP5 NP damage, you can always just go ahead and give her the Black Grail. You can go ahead and use her third skill if you want, that will take care of the Black Grail's demerit, and you can still deal that massive 80% increased NP strength damage. As far as command codes for Salome, there are three specifically that I do want to mention that I think are excellent picks for her. If, however, you don't have any of these three and just want to go full freebie on your servant that is also completely free, go ahead and try to focus on critical star generation for her quick card. And then for her other cards, give her something like code cure or give her something like the command code that heals. It ain't much, but it's a solid bonus that's going to help her out. Let's start by recommending the Nun with a Bodhisattva's Merciful Gaze. This command code featuring Kiara increases the damage against lawful alignment enemies by 20% on the engraved card. Salome's already got an attack bonus against lawful good, so this can just go ahead and stack with that in those niche fights. It also provides a nice bonus against ruler enemies. I mean, Salome's already dealing extra damage to them, but dealing extra damage to a ruler always is a good idea. So deal even more. Of course, and I feel like this is mandatory if you are using Salome as a main damage healer, give her Demonic Beast of the Forest. This inflicts curse damage for three turns when attacking the enemy using the engraved card. It stacks with the bonus on her Noble Phantasm. It stacks what you can get with Baobon Seath and Ashia Doman. It is just an excellent pick all around for Salome. If you have it and you want to use her, give her this code. And finally, of course, I did mention Code Cure. There is a buffed up version of this you can give Salome as well called White Vessel's Command Seal. If you weren't able to get off the debuff immunity at the right time, this can remove a harmful debuff from Salome and help her stick around a little longer. 
Overall, based on her virtue of being a two-star berserker, Salome is a solid addition to the friend point gotcha that you should be happy to have in your Chaldea. That doesn't mean she doesn't come with pitfalls though. Her blood-soaked silver platter's biggest attack bonus is fairly niche, and you won't find a lot of opportunities to use it. Also, her Dance of the Seven Veils skill is really weird. I really don't like that it removes defensive buffs on a Berserker who is already super weak based on class advantage to begin with, but she also has a low HP pool on top of that. I really feel like most masters just won't end up using this skill, and Salome will end up acting like a servant with just two skills. I really, really hope this skill in particular gets a buff in the future. There's also, of course, the issue of some of Salome's strongest supporters at this time, Baobon Seath and Ashia Doman, not even being on NA at the time of her release. So you're going to have to wait a little bit to get those characters on your side. But give it time and you'll find that Salome will blossom even more into a confident free-to-play unit that you should enjoy having on your team. Who, honestly, Shin, really, really worth the grails. A good pick. I think she has some buffs in her future, and I think that we are going to eventually see a very, very good Salome. Here's hoping. For now, though, she's just okay. But of course, I want to know what you all think, so let me know your thoughts about Salome down in the comment section below. Let me know if there are any other allies, craft essences, or command codes you would use her with, and let me know if she is your favorite servant from the newly added servants in the friend point gotcha. Tell me why I really, really do want to see the general appeal of her, because I haven't gotten around to leveling mine yet. If you want to, of course, talk more Fate Grand Order, my Discord is always open. Big thanks to the patrons on Patreon and the subscribers and followers on Twitch for their continued support. I really appreciate you guys. You always make the streams very, very fun. So thank you so much for being there. This is Kawaii50, hoping you all have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you all in the next video.